I am back to remind you that 2021 was a year that happened halfway through the third month of 2022 because I awesome at this. I'm really punctual. I'm really good at uh, being on time with things that I did last year and telling you about them this year. I don't know if you know this, um, so if you're new here, hi, I'm Ruthie. I have an editor, their name is Pika. I love to read, write, draw, and my YouTube channel is a disaster zone. And I stream on Twitch. I have a Patreon. I am also a mess. So I have a TikTok. Where am I going with this? I did a lot of reading in 2021 because I wanted to read. I think I maybe made a New Year's resolution on it. I don't remember, to be honest. It's not important though, because I did end up reading quite a bit. I read like 23 books, honorable mention 24, because I can't remember if I read it in 2021 or if I read it in 2020. So that honorable mention will be brought up. Um, and I made a list. It's not a top 23 list, but it's a list and all the books that I read will be mentioned in this list. I have to move all my Furbies. I love you guys. That's how much you know I love you because I have to move my, my Furbies. Ugh, ugh, fuck, bro, this is, not a, this is a lot. Okay, I have five categories that all of the books that I've read last year fit under and it's written in my handy dandy note clerk. The categories for this year's books is category one. No. Category two, forgettable. Category three, I liked this. Category four, I would recommend this book for whatever reasons that I will explain in the list. In top five of my favorite books that I may or may not recommend, and we'll get to that too. The no category of which I it's a category of books that I won't recommend and that I won't read again for whatever reason. It is first of all, Exquisite Corpse and The Girl Next Door, which I don't have. Pika, you, you know what to do. This book. I have written, I have, I have review videos of those books specifically. So if you want to, hear my thoughts on those books, you can go and watch the videos. And now I'm going to inbox this book. Yeah! I'm just gonna add all the books right there. Anyway, Exquisite Courts and The Girl Next Door are just two books that I've already made reviews on and I'm not gonna talk about again. So, moving on. Category five these forgettable books that um, I will give you a little bit of what I remember them, but I promise you, I don't remember a lot because they're forgettable. Oh, fuck. Wildwood and Under the Wildwood. Um, I found Wildwood at a thrift store, so I bought it. And then I bought the sequel and I have the last book that I kind of just need to push through. The premise is really cool. They're in like Oregon or something. And then there's like a hidden city with magical people and shit inside. And it's for kids. It's a kid's book. This is the reason why I'm forgettable. I'm sure if I read it as a kid, I would have really loved it, but forgettable. Library of Ruthie Lucy. There's a B. Journey to the center. Wait, uh, no, just journey. Journey to the center of the earth by Jerns, Jerns Burn. Fuck, Jules Burn. God, I, English is not a language I speak, I guess. Anyway, it's the plot of, it. smart people go to the center of the earth. Earth is hollow, mole people, whatever. Anyway, next book. Okay, I read all the John Green books. Uh, I think there's like two of them I haven't read yet. Um, and they're all in the forgettable category because I should have read them when I was a teenager. If I had read these when I was a teenager, I think they would have been more impactful, but um, Fault in Our Stars that I don't have a slip cover for, so it was just black book. <laughs> Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Um, cancer Girl has cancer and 
her boyfriend also has cancer or had cancer or something. It was very, they, they kiss at Anne Frank's monument was not cool, but I don't know, man. It was, it was smart. Uh, Will Grayson Will Grayson is about two people named Will Grayson. Uh, one is gay and the other one is friends with the one, the gay one's crush. Boyfriend? I can't remember. It's forgettable. I love the cover, by the way. 10 out of 10 cover. Love the cover. Also, someone did buy me all the green, John Green books, and I don't want you to think I didn't like them. I did enjoy reading them. They're just forgettable for me because I am a 27-year-old woman. These were written for teenage girls. Or just teenagers. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say just teenage girls. It's for the teenage demographic. Looking for Alaska. We're looking for a chick named Alaska. This one made me cry. I'm pretty sure. Is this, which one was this one? Oh, right. Uh, don't remember. I remember this made me cry and I liked reading it. I liked reading it a lot. And Paper Towns. It's a very similar to Looking for Alaska. I I'm not going to say spoilers. Uh, never mind. Anyway, I don't remember what this is about, but uh, I read it and I liked it at the time, so good for me. Thank you, John Green. Your words are words. I'm really excited to talk about these because I did really like them and I know that we have a recommended section as well and then a top five. So you can only imagine how much my excitement grows from this point. Anyway, this is Carmilla by Sheridan La Fadu. Yes, this is a vampire novel that was written before Dracula and uh, has lady vampires. It's really, really good and it is a classic. It's part of classic literature and I do recommend it even if you aren't a fan of classic literature. As you can see, it is very short. I think I read this in like an evening and the prose is a little old, but very easy to understand. So I do think that you should read this, uh, especially if you love vampire fiction and you want to see its roots. Because like I said, this, this was written before Dracula. Next book, Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Bezterica. A, I'm pretty sure Argentinian. Yes, this is an, this is an Argentinian author and a book set in Argentina. This book is, hmm, if you like disturbing content, this is what I consider disturbing light content. There were a couple of scenes in this book that made me go, Hmm, that's not great. This is about a society where a virus has tainted all of the meat and is essentially makes all protein uh, in animal form poison to humans. And so humans are the new meat that is sold. And some people are born and raised to be meat for slaughter and all of that awful stuff. Isn't it so awful? I liked this book. Um, the reason why this book is not in my top five, actually, um, is because I wanted more concepts to be explored and I kind of just wanted more of the book, but still really good. Six of Crows is a book that I bought because of TikTok. It is by, who the fuck is it by? Lee Badugo. Leia Lee Badugo. It's great. It's about a group of uh, ne'er-do-well thieves doing some thieving shit. They're doing a heist. It's a good heist novel really fun. There's magic. This is a part of a world made by this. Um, it author of the Grisha trilogy. Um, you don't need to read her other works in order for this to make sense. I have never heard of this author or her world until this book. And, um, 
I still really like this book. It has a sequel and I have not read the sequel yet because I am lazy and I it's really hard for me to do series especially since I got to Wheel of Time. We'll take that book series and put a pin on it because we're gonna be talking about that later but I do recommend this book especially if you like fantasy dark fantasy. It is uh, there's not a lot of lights in this. They're doing a heist. Who does heists during the day? Neuromancer by William Gibson. Yes, William Gibson. Neuromancer is a part of a series that this author wrote that invented the cyberpunk genre. So if you're going to read this, know that this is where the tropes come from. So it feels very tropey, but this is where the tropes come from. Um, I recommend this if you really like the cyberpunk like world and you want to see where it came from. I have all the books over there. Thank you, Coffee. And I do recommend them. I They're very... It kind of starts off slow and if you're not used to reading sci-fi, there's a lot of jargon that you have to get through before you really before you really get into it, you know what I mean? So, and last but not least, definitely not least, don't ever think this is the least, The Rising Storm, which is part of the Star Wars High Republic era series of shit that they're releasing. I, the only reason why I don't re recommend Star Wars is because of the fandom is one reason and the second reason is there's a lot of High Republic books so this is the second in the series and I read it first so some of these characters I was like who the fuck is you and why do I care about you um but uh I still really really like it and I have the first and the third I have the whole series and I'm going to read the first one and then like brush up on what happens in the second one and then read the third one. So don't read this book first is also a reason why it's not on my recommended list. I wrote them. I read them out of order. This is uh, by Caven Scott. I've never heard of that author, but I haven't heard of most of the authors on this list anyway until I started readings again. Ugh. Uh, yeah, if you like, if you like Star Wars and you hate the time period that everything is set in, High Republic is a, such a good time in Star Wars because it's the time in Star Wars that I want things to be set in. I want a whole bunch of Jedi fighting Sith all the fucking time. That's what I want and that's what I got from this book. So if that's what you want, read the book. And now we are going to be moving to the one, two, three, four, five books that I recommend to you to read. Do you remember how I have an honorable mention that I don't remember if I read it in 2021? Well, now you're going to unpin that thought. Here it is. I recommend you read Axiom's End and Truth of the Divine, which is book one and book two of the new Mina series. I don't know how to fucking say that word, okay? This is a sci-fi series set in 2005? What is it set in? I think it's 2000 and something. Um, George Bush was president in one of these. Just know that I love these books and I, but I pre-ordered these books. Who, you know, like I had never pre-ordered books before. These I pre-ordered because I fucking, first of all, this is written by the lovely Lindsay Ellis, who is a YouTuber that I have watched every single video they've ever made. Some of them, I've watched them three or four times because I'll show them to people and watch them again. Uh, when she revealed that she was writing a book, I pre-ordered it the moment that pre-orders were released, and then I pre-ordered the second one. And I'm waiting for pre-orders to drop for the third book, which I need to go check. Monster Boyfriend is all I'm gonna say to sell you or unsell you the book. It, no, Monster Boyfriend. There's no, mm, you know what, Monster Boyfriend. Just, just know that Monster Boyfriend is in this it's first contact it's sci-fi i haven't really read a lot of sci-fi recently so other than the cyberpunk which i don't know if you can consider cyberpunk genre sci-fi i'm not i'm illiterate in like four languages okay i don't know what is and isn't considered sci-fi so i recommend these two books so much with every fiber of my being if you love sci-fi, you will not regret reading these. 
will not regret it all. Oh my god, that is a precarious stack that we're making. Verity by Colin Hoover. This is the first book I've read by Colin Hoover, and there's a few Colin Hoover books that I'm gonna read. For uh, But here is not a quote. Holy shit, I say, laughing. When we get to the register, I can't stop smiling. I don't know that I've ever seen that kind of epic burn in person. Jeremy begins placing things on the conveyor belt. I probably shouldn't have stooped to her level, but I can't stand hypocrites. Yes, but without hypocrites, there would be no epic, karmatic moments like the one I just witnessed. And something about seeing epic burn in a book makes me giggle. Anyway, that's not supposed to sell you on this book unless you like weird, funny stuff like that. Anyway, this book is not for anybody under the age of 18. First of all, there are some rated for M for mature uh, scenes in here, but this is also on, uh, if you want to get into disturbing content, but, and you feel like you can kind of handle some really weird concepts, Verity is a really good weird concept that you could totally get into. A fun wild ride that is cheesy and horrific at the same time. Um, yeah, I don't think I really want to get too much into it. It's, uh, essentially, it is a, uh, it is a standalone romantic thriller. The relationship in it is fucked, the situation is fucked, everything about it is fucked, and it has a bit of a murky ending that makes you wonder who the good guy is. So, good, fun, hug. It's a good book. If you like thrillers, if you like kind of disturbing content, I really recommend it. Anyway, next, Where the Crawdad Sings by Delilah Owens. I really, really liked this book. Um, there's not much more else to say. It's a, I thought it was a quick read. It's really sad and I did make a review on this book. So if you really want to see my thoughts with this book, you should go watch that video. I think that video was not edited by Pika because I hadn't hired them as an editor yet. So you get to see my attempted editing style. It was during the very, very small era of time when I was trying to do scripts I don't do scripts and I had a comment er, on one of my videos that was like, you need a script. No, you need to fuck off. I'm sorry, that was very mean. No, you need to just let me do my thing because I'm not gonna do scripts. You want me to do scripts? Write my scripts. That shit's fucking difficult. Oh yeah. Murder mystery. Next is Eye of the World by Robert Johnson. What is this? This is the first book in the Wheel of Time series. When I say adult fiction, I mean a more mature fiction. It doesn't have sexy scenes in it. Actually, the boys blush when they see an ankle, so there's nothing in there, believe me. But Eye of the World is the first book in Robert Jordan's... Did I say Johnson earlier? Vlad, please don't kill me. This series, it's 14 books plus a prequel or it's 13 books plus a prequel. I can't remember. And I'm current, at this moment in time, I'm currently about ready to start the fourth book. I've read through three of them. I will say this, they are chunky reads. There's a lot to get through. And I'm reading this because it is like three or four of my friends favorite series of all times. So the first book, however, I recommend it because I think this series is good so far, especially, but you have to get through the first one, which makes this really weird to recommend the first one, but the series has to start somewhere and I recommend this series as a whole. However, the first book, my problem with the first book is it feels like it was very, very, very much inspired by Lord of the Rings, so you can predict a lot of things and it takes a little while to get the world set up, but that's more of a fantasy problem than a this book problem. And you also have to remember that this book was written in 1990, I believe. I think he was working it in the 80s, released it in 1990, despite any grievances that I have with it, because I think you should read the series. I haven't completed the series, so uh, ask me next year if I actually recommend the, the series as a whole. So we're going to go ahead and give this the old in Imbasse! Did you see that? I am the best bitch that's ever lived. 
And the last book in my recommended series that I've read is Remina by Jinji Ito. This is a horror manga and it is so good. I loved it. The art style in this book is amazing because it's Jinji Ito. The horror in the book is more of a cosmic horror than it is like gory or super shock value. And it's just really fun. I love horror as a genre. Maybe I will make a video talking about why I love the horror genre so much. I would actually just sit and think, and man, that's really fucking hard. I don't know if I want to sit and think. My brain already hurts thinking about it. I have so much more of Jinji Ito stuff. I have Uzumaki, I have Tomi, I have, um, what other? I don't think I have anything. Uh, I don't think the other one's in here. Anyway, I've pretty much bought, I pretty much have bought everything by Jinji Ito. So you will see more Jinji Ito next year whenever we do this. Um, it's going to be kind of hard for me. Oh, there it is. I can emboss this part. Um, so embossed it goes. Uh, remember that this is a Japanese manga. Uh, I say manga. Japanese manga, like there's any other type of manga. This is a manga, so it is backwards. So, ooh, I wonder if you see... Ah, you see how it's in ball? That's nice. It's right backwards. Anyway, super good. Recommend it, especially if you love horror. Jinji Ito, if, if you are a horror fan and you don't know about Jinji Ito, let me introduce you to Jinji Ito. And if you haven't, uh, if you don't want to buy Jinji Ito, um, I would recommend that you look up the comic uh, something fault. Um, I would look up uh, this hole was made for me, that line, and then the comic that comes up with that. There is an Imgur compilation of the whole comic, it's really short, and that would be your best foray into Jinji Ito, because he is a character and a half, let me tell ya. Now it is the top five books of 2021 for me that I read in 2021, and on number five, the Shining by Stephen King, which I'm letting someone borrow this book, which is why I only have the slipcover. Stephen King is my uh, imaginary nemesis because I read his memoir on writing and he said a couple of things in on writing that I'm like, who the fuck are you? Who, do you who the fuck do you think you are thinking you can boss me around? Huh? Well, he he's Stephen King, first of all. <laughs> um... I have only read Under the Dome. Before this, I'd only had read Under the Dome, which was a fantastic idea with a shitty ending, in my opinion. And um, I hadn't read anything by Stephen King since. I now have so many Stephen King novels that are on the bottom that I will eventually get through. Um, thank you, Coffee, because Coffee sent me quite a few of them. Uh, so I will... Uh, say that The Shining is one of the like first books that Stephen King read. It's a very early, early Stephen King book and I really like it. Um, it's pretty good, I say, and I don't know if I recommend it because it's an older book that has some mm, not so good things said in it. Uh, it does have some slurs because this book was written in the 80s. I don't think I could ever really recommend Stephen King because of some of the things he writes I don't really agree with, but I did read The Shining, I did like The Shining, and I do know that Stephen King has a super overarching universe and I'm really excited to delve into. I cannot emboss this, so I'm just going to throw it over there. Book number four in my top five books is Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. She is a fantastic author, who, and this is a modern retelling of the Iliad. Spoiler alert for the Iliad. So if you've read the Iliad, or you know about the Iliad, or uh, you know anything about Greek mythology, this book is going to have it, but it's said in a modern way. It's very good. Book talk was all the rage, and I wouldn't say it is the, like, best thing ever written. But it is a really, really good retelling of the Iliad, and I really, really love it. The romance in it is really good. I just mm, can't get enough of it. It's 
so good. Um, I cannot wait for her to write more books. She has one called Cersei. It's about it's about Cersei, and it is a retelling of the Odyssey by in Cersei's like point of view, um, which I'll talk about next year because I read it this year. So, <laughs> um, Song of Achilles. I really recommend it, especially if you love Greek mythology. The writing is very beautiful. Um, it's one of my top fives because if, of how beautiful the writing is. The third book in my top five is The Girl Next Door. Yes, this is also in my no list, so I don't recommend you actually read this. I like the book because it made me probably feel the most emotions. Sorry, I was itching. Um, that was weird. Sorry, anyway. Oh, the most emotions. Ugh. I was so angry after it. I read that book in one sitting. Don't do that. That book is very traumatizing. And I was so upset. And man, I had to like rant about it for 30 minutes. Whew. Anyway, it was a book that made me feel the most. So I put on my top five because I do feel like feeling feelings towards a piece of media. Usually like when you have a, a lot of passion towards a media, whether it's hatred or love, it's worth something. And that book is worth a lot of passion it made me angry i'm not like it's not that i don't recommend you read it it's just that i don't recommend you read it if you don't if you don't read a lot of horror or disturbing content because it is very very disturbing especially knowing that it was based on a real real life thing that happened mm, really gets ya girly anyway we're gonna move on from that book i made a video about that book which you knew about uh, number two is The Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. This is the first book of the Hannibal Lecter series and I loved it. It's, I forget that the 80s didn't happen a long time ago, which is when this book was written. And um, it feels like it should, like pieces from that time, I say pieces from that time and I, I'm acting like it's from like 1880s. No, there's nothing. I just feel like I would find the language hard to understand, but I don't know. Don't, where is that thought even going? I don't know, it ran away from me. Anyway, this is the first book in Hannibal Lecter. It is the first book that has introduced Hannibal Lecter as a character into the modern age. Why I started on my journey of collecting and reading the Hannibal books is because I really like the NBC show Hannibal, even though I did not finish it because it was too intense and then it got taken off of Netflix, so I've got to start it again. And I and one of my favorite movies is Silence of the Lambs. I love that movie. I've got pieces of that movie memorized. So I wanted to read the books and I really like Red Dragon. It's just really, it's really nice. I like reading from Will's perspective, even though Will is not like the main character. The NBC show would make you think can uh, uh, Will is actually like the, uh, main character it he's not um most of it's done through star uh clary starling which is in the next two books and i think the last book is like uh, a prequel of like how hannibal is i don't know because i haven't read them but yeah uh i'm really excited to read silence of the lambs i was able to get a hard hardcover copy of signs of the lambs but yep number two and last but not least my number one book of 2021 that I read is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. This is a fantastic read. I read this in one sitting right after The Girl Next Door, which is probably the reason why it is 30 times better than it should be in my head. Um, this is the funniest shit I've ever read. It, it does good hearted poking at religion instead of uh, disrespectful poking at religion, I think. Um, there is a a movie that has Alan Rickman as like an angel or whatever. I can't remember that movie's name, but that movie felt like really mean spirited towards uh, Christianity. This one just makes, it's just fun in that way. Uh, really, really good. It's about the end of the world and the Antichrist and a demon and an angel. It's good shit. I cannot, I cannot, I, there are not enough words in the human language to explain how much I enjoyed this here book. I think that if you can snag a copy of it, you should read it because it's just so, 
Mmm, so good. And it's written by some, the comedy giants, writing giants, just, these are good writers right here. These motherfuckers were like, hmm, what if we banged our heads together and made a book? And then they made this. It's great. It's good. Awesome. Love it. Would love to eat. Mm, the 2021 stack. Wow. Look at all these books I read. I read all those pages. That's a lot of pages. Ooh, it's a scary amount of pages. Anyway, I've already read 13 books for 2022, I think, at the time of recording. Uh, so I should totally be able to beat my own record. Woo! That is what I read in 2021. If you read anything, you can go ahead and let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have read any of these books in my stack, you can go ahead and tell me how you like them. Um, and if you think my opinion is shit or good, I don't know. I didn't really go into too much depth about uh, these books too much. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't go into too much depth, but tell me if you have any ideas of what you would like me to talk about in a YouTube video. If you have any fan fictions you would recommend me read that would, uh, that, cause I am thinking about, uh, reading more fan fiction and, uh, writing reviews on them because it'd be funny. Here's a heart just for you, a pile of favorite ladies right now. I care, it's your heart, you do you. Announcement time. I have a Patreon. You know what Patreon is. Go do that. Um, two, I have written a short story. Uh, it is not released yet. It is called The Janitors, and I am currently in the editing process. If you would like to get a first glimpse at that at the short story before I release it to the public, you can uh, go to my Patreon and do any tier, probably the five dollar tier, and then you. Uh, I I haven't really like thought this through, but the five dollar tier probably will get you access to it when it is completed. It will be uh, completed. I should be able to finish editing it and rewriting it by the end of this month, but I will announce it on Twitter and Discord and all the other places when that stuff is actually going to get done. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's all of my announcements. I don't really have any other announcements. So thank you, Pika, for editing this video and taking my incoherent thoughts and making a coherent video out of them. I think that is it. Okay, bye. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs>